Hey guys. This this video is probably gonna ruffle some feathers or downright tick some people off. I got involved with a Facebook thing there a year or so ago. And when I saw that there's these logger groups, and I'm looking at like thousands of members, I thought, wow, that's pretty cool. So I got on a few of them. And really for, for two reasons. Okay, one, I've been doing this a long time. I've had just amazing opportunities to travel, work with a lot of guys all over the country, a couple weeks in Europe, Scotland. You don't get that kind of opportunity without learning a few things. Work with that many guys and that many different logging systems, you're gonna pick up a trick or two. And I thought, well, I could pass them along. You know, maybe help some guys out. The second thing I thought is, I can learn. I'm always learning. Never ends. There's something that I learned that I honestly couldn't believe. Here we are, 2021, and I'm still seeing, looks like professional loggers, chasing the tree down. Saw right in the back. Trees halfway to the ground, chips are flying in there right there, still cutting. And I thought, wow. I mean, I, I'm assuming they know what they're doing. They certainly look it, and I'm betting they do. I'm not questioning, you know, their, their skill level or their experience and their years and wisdom and all of that. But wow, this idea of chasing a tree down, I honestly thought, well, maybe you know, it creates this, you know, pretty cool photo op. You know, but no. The thing that kicked me over the edge that I said, I'm going to throw a video out there and let her fly, is when I saw on YouTube, I saw an instructor with a bunch of younger guys watching him. He takes this tree down, about the size of that white pine. And the trees, shoot, it's more than halfway to the ground. He's still cutting. And when he shuts the saw off, one of the first things he comments to these guys that are watching him as an instructor, he says, I stuck with it as long as I could. Are you flipping kidding me? There is zero reason, nada, none. Few things in life are absolute, this is one of them. There is no reason to be near that tree when it starts to free fall. I don't care, forward lean, side lean, doubles, triples, jacking, swinging, wedging, hurt them all, okay? There's a moment in time, there's an instant, when that tree starts to fall, it's crossed that line and you're not stopping it, it's going. Get away from the base of that tree. Let's acknowledge some reality here, guys. You don't work in the woods long and you become real, real keen on the fact that you're in the woods with a saw around equipment. I think of it this way. There's a risk factor, okay? It's an inherent danger. It's an accepted risk. Call it what you want. But I think of it as kind of like a five on that scale of zero to 10. Zero being, you're not gonna get hurt, don't worry about it. 10, you're dead before the end of the day. I think there's about a five throughout the day. Lots of ways of getting hurt, right? But we manage it, we learn, we watch, communicate, right? But when that tree crosses that line and starts to free fall, that risk factor spikes to about a 9.9. .9. Think about it, for about 20 to 30 seconds as that tree's fallen, Limbs are breaking, trees are, you know, getting pushed around. All that mass is going over, right? Your life is literally in peril for about 20 or 30 seconds. Tree hits the ground, things stop rocking around, limbs drop down, kind of look things over again. We're back to that five. Heads up, but it's manageable. 40 years of working here, I've 
lost four guys to the woods. Four guys that I knew personally, working on their own jobs, and I got the phone call. Jason, first two guys, actually the same name, red pine butt, crushed him up against another tree. Jason was the second guy, dead limb, out of the top. They found him in the woods. Robert, dead top, broke out, crushed him up against his skitter. Kevin, I worked with Kevin 30 some years ago. This fall, I was driving past his landing. He's two miles from my house. I drive past his landing and I see the ambulance, the fire truck, and two state troopers. And when I saw this two state troopers, I knew it was bad. Sure enough, Saturday morning. His daughter had stopped with a coffee and a muffin for him. He wasn't on the landing. She went in to see, found him. He was already gone. Saw laid right next to him, still idling. Blunt trauma to the head. Okay, guys. This, um, you know, you could get killed doing this. Yeah. That's not a cliche. This is the real deal. One guy I know put it really nicely. He said, this is live fire. Okay, this idea of this holding wood in the back or the trigger wood or whatever you want to call it, don't go off on the deep end on me here and, and think that I'm from some ivory tower place and saying, well, if you do this, you're not going to get hurt. Well, of course not. That's stupid. But it allows you to get away from the base of that tree. There's no reason to be right there chasing that thing down. Okay, this, look at the statistics circle around the tree, right? Radius around the base of that tree. That's where they find the body. I'm going to tell you something else. This idea of getting killed in the woods. I know a guy, this was last winter. Works right here locally. Retired age, okay? Worked in the woods his whole life. You know the deal. Once you work in the woods, hard to get out. Loved it. Dead, dead limb. Hit him in the head. Hit him on the hard hat, shattered a hard hat, broke his skull. If the person, he was working t 10 minutes, 10 minutes from the hospital, the person he was working with got him to the hospital in 10 minutes. They took one look at the injury, they threw him right in an ambulance and shipped him directly to a bigger hospital where they had the facility to handle him. And they split his head from his eyes to the back of his head, right across the top of his ear. They split his skull and took his skull off so that his brain could swell. I stood right there when he came out of it and he's back around. I stood right next to his bed talking to him. And I'll tell you what, it's some bizarre to talk to a guy that looks like half his head is gone. And a month later, they put his skull back on and he's alive today. He can be with his family, he can do a little work, never go to the woods again. There's something that keeps my, you know, keeps me, how do they say it, you know, keep your head in the game kind of thing. And I'll tell you honestly, you're talking here about people dying. It's not dying. I always say, you know, kind of the leading cause of death is being born. Guaranteed. It's not the dying, okay, part. Here's what scares me. What scares me is to get hit, like that guy I just mentioned. And I find myself sitting in a chair, staring out a window. And weeks have turned into months, and months have turned into years. And I'm staring out that window, wishing somebody would come and visit, you know, like they did right after the injury happened. You know the deal, guys, right? Human nature. Right after someone gets hurt, oh, geez, go see him, see how he's doing. A couple weeks later, you might get a text. Hey, how you doing, buddy? Thinking of you today. While I'm sitting there and my wife is wiping the drool off my chin. That's what scares me. It's not hard to do, guys. If you, I know there's guys out there. You, if, you've, if you've bared to watch through this here, you know, I know there's a lot of guys that say, well, yeah, that's just the way you do it. But if you've been 
able to not start spitting nails and you're chasing trees down and that's the way you were taught or, and all of that, that's fine. But think about it. You know, I hear this, look up, look up, look up. I don't always look up. Well, of course you look up. You're sizing up your tree when you're walking up to it. A production cutter, is he sizing up? He or she? Sizing up two, three, four, five trees at a time. Figuring out what order you're going to cut them in. But when you start cutting, you pay attention to what you're doing. Get your notch done. Get your hinge right for that tree. Your back cut is done. The trigger wood is established. You take another look around. It only takes a second, literally. Some crews have systems. You know, they're yelling. They got a whistle. They're yodeling. I don't, whatever you do. Check it out. Make sure your drop zone there is still clear. Nobody come in on you. And I say it's a snip, a click, and a go. The snip, cut the trigger wood. The click, set your chain break. And the go, get out into that escape destination that you already pre-planned when you started into your tree. It's not hard. Just might be a little bit different. It might save a life.